coming out of hospital, I just felt frail. I was this strong athlete that was training every day. And then I was in a wheelchair, I couldn't even do one push up. So what's it like being a man in 2019? Mental health isn't always the easiest thing to talk about, but we also have a lot of feelings, so we probably should. We've got five men in a room to do just that. This is Man Up. I mean, I suppose, yeah, what, what do you think is, is, is expected of you as men? I think you can be expected to do whatever the hell you want. I think there's, there's an element of acceptance of everything now. As in, in, I don't think there's like a, there's gender stereotypes that are nearly as defined as they have been. Does that overcomplicate it, do you think? So men can get confused? You're thinking, I'm supposed to be this person, but somebody else wants you to be this person. So like, let's say you're in a relationship now. That's, I'll use myself as an example. I think I'm supposed to be this way towards my partner, but I'm doing the complete opposite because I feel like this is the way it's supposed to be done. This what is the way I... What do you think you're meant to be? Breadwinner, provider, protector. Um, what I've grown up seeing a man is supposed to be. As a man, you don't want to come across as weak. You don't want to come across as you can't provide. I'm not strong enough for you. I can't do this. Um, I, can't show, I can't let you know my emotions. I can't let you know we're struggling. I can't let you know times are hard. And for me, that was the the hardest experience ever. You got a game on a Saturday, you think you've played well, but then you're thinking in your head, oh my God, I could have made that pass better, I could have done that cross better, I could have shot here, I could have done this, I could have done that. And then you got to think, okay, snap out of it. You got a game Tuesday. Yeah. And you try and put all those things that you didn't do on a Saturday into a Tuesday game. And then you don't do it because you're too tired, because you've overworked yourself mentally. And then you have to go again Saturday, then Tuesday, then Saturday, then Tuesday, then Saturday, and then... I think for, well, for us playing football and stuff as well, it's not just the expectations of us, the expectations of the club, the fans, and what comes after. Games, if you don't perform well, if you miss chances, Dangerous. things like that. The abuse you get after it, and you need, you need to just take it in the chin. I mean, the abuse you get, you, the abuse you hear for the side. I've had, I've had fans... After I've done my story in the paper, I've had fancy opposite teams shouting, like, go and hang yourself and do it properly this time. I think um, being involved in sport at any sort of level is tough for anyone. Um, and, and the higher you go, I think it brings more problems with it. The expectations fans have of you, um, it can really have a negative impact. And people don't understand what, what goes on behind closed doors, they just expect you to turn up and, and perform the way they would expect you to, so they, they don't take into account anything that's happening and, and it leaves you kind of open to all sorts of abuse and um, everything else if, if, you, if you don't kind of perform the way you're expected. Do you have expectations on what you should look like? Mm. In what sense? Like, so at Tottenham we used to do that body fat testing and I'm of a big frame, so like I always had to do extra running, extra this, extra that, just so I could fit this image of a footballer, what a footballer is supposed to look like. And like, it didn't help because I started to hate myself and I started to think, oh, I'm gonna start starving myself. But then in turn, it, that, in turn that just made it worse. And then like, a couple of years ago, I was playing and then I heard a fan say, Oh, you fat boy, pull up your socks, because I wear my socks proper low. And like, it just made me think, oh, flipping hell, like, that feeling of, I'm not good enough, I'm, like, my body's horrible, and I just hated it, man. It's mad how little words can, mm. can hurt so much, isn't it? I get it, I get it a lot as well. <laughs> um, it's obviously because I'm so short. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big arse. <laughs> <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm playing, I get it all the time, like, hey, fat boy. So I, I actually do look fat when I'm playing, but I'm not. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so if I score and stuff, I'm like, tap off. <laughs> <laughs> Getting booked for it, but... Uh, does it get to you? Like It does sometimes, aye. Sometimes it annoys me, do you know what I mean? Like, players bump into me, like, oh, you're f stay with you, fat, whatever, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, just fat, mate, yeah, just yeah. fat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's a wee bit fat in there, right? Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was reading you lost 20 kilos, was it? No, I lost 10. When I was in hospital for, I think it was about four weeks, I lost 
I think 10 or 11 kilos in weight. And obviously being uh, a very physical, capable person before the accident, to not being able to move for four weeks and then when I was able to move, looking at myself in the mirror and seeing like a kind of, almost like a shadow of your former self. Um, that was tough to deal with because I'm used to seeing myself looking strong, I'm used to feeling strong, um, and other people looking at me as a strong, physical um, individual. I was bones. Like, I lost, like, when you see, when you Sprinters and machines, aren't Yeah, you? well that's the thing, I mean, my, my, my frame, my skeleton isn't big, naturally. Like, I've got a small frame, so everything I've got is just muscle on top. So I lost all my muscle, and then coming out of hospital, I just felt frail. I was this strong athlete that was training every day, and then I was in a wheelchair, I couldn't even do one push-up. Um, so yeah, I mean, I felt, I felt rubbish. I felt, I mean, I've never really, in terms of body consciousness and social media and how you look, I've never really been too, too conscious of that. Maybe it's because I've been lucky enough to be an athlete and I've always been in some sort of shape and I don't know how I'd feel if I wasn't in shape. I remember like pre, pre Love Island, like you, you, I mean, I've watched all the seasons before, and you, everyone in there is in mad nick. Like you, you're looking at them on TV, you're like it's all you, about you. You, yeah, you, all, you, you look at them, and you're like, you lot are all like <laughs> the kind of people that I follow on Instagram as like yeah. the, them fitness people that you'll <laughs> never get close to. And then suddenly they're like, Josh, you're going on. I'm thinking, I'm like somebody. <laughs> like, I'm like someone who's like not. I'm never like so far out of shape, but I'm not. I'm not like I don't walk around with a six pack that like, mm. normally. Like, mm. I'm just I, I've got like a decent shape to me, but. I lived in the gym, like, mm. I lived it. For Love I, Island. For like, Love Island, right? Because I'm thinking, I've got to be on TV. It's bad enough when you've got to go on holiday. Yeah, yeah, I used to treat yeah. holiday like a training camp, yeah, like yeah, six yeah. weeks, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm out here eating salad, I've got my meal prep, like, you know. So when it was Love Island, I was going, right, I've got, you know, six weeks before I've got to go on. I remember looking in the mirror, and I, at this point, like, when I look back at it, like, I, was in, I was in mad, Nick, I was shredded. But I look at it and I go, I don't want to go on. They didn't say to me explicitly, like, you've got to look like this, or you've got to do this, you've got to do that, but. There's an expectation. Yeah, there's, of course there's an expectation. While I guess you're, you're on this show and you're, you're trying to be natural, you're trying to be the, the best version of you, you know, you, you are worried about, you know, what people think, you know, you are being broadcast to the nation. For a thousand, you know, nice comments you get, you, you seem to remember the, the negative ten. Do you think that has created an image of masculinity, like re reality TV shows, how kind of like people look in them? Because even when I, I, don't, I, mean, I didn't watch Love Island that much, but even when I watched it, I was like, I'm not very, I don't have many apps. <laughs> you know I mean? um, and it, like, I suppose, like, once again, it's kind of the image of, of our influences. You know, do, do they impact the way we see 100%, ourselves? 100%, 100%. I mean, I mean, what man, especially, I mean, feeding back into our pride and ego as males, you don't want to be the small, skinny or fat male, do you? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's nothing uh, worse than if you've been on the beach yeah. and like, you, you're looking at your own derby and you, you see Everyone some... weirdly yeah, lean yeah, back yeah. then for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah there's nothing yeah. worse than like, you know, oh. if, you're with, if you're with a girl, you're with your boys, yeah. and like someone walks down the beach with an unbelievable six pack and you're just looking at yourself and you, you do feel emasculated. Do you feel yeah, like, what the hell? What do you think should be expected of men? We should be expected to just be able to be a bit more open and free of our emotions and not be as afraid or feel that kind of being in touch with your emotions is demasculating. Mm. Um, because it will just make a better society in general. I think, I mean, you, you go around and traditionally, you said you was angry back in the day and all the rest of it. You've probably got so many people, like, especially males, that are maybe involved in violence or fighting, and they've probably got issues going on. And it's probably because they can't express themselves. They might be in a situation where they're down and depressed. Mm -hmm. but, I know back in the day when I was younger and I used to kind of roll around and in my, in my area with a couple of my friends and things weren't going great, I'd just be listening to gigs all day on, the, on, the, on, on my stereo and I'd be in this mindset and then everyone in the car's in the same mindset and none of us have got money, we're all kind of down and then you kind of, you're on this bad path where like, anything can happen at any time and that's only because we're hurting within ourselves. It's kind of that one acceptable emotion, isn't it, of anger? When you're around that and that's all you've ever known and you've only grown up being around, you, you tend to follow it, especially like when I left football, those were my friends. So those are the only people I could look to and be like, yo, like, what are you lot doing today? What are we doing today? And I'd gone from training every day, waking up, eat, sleep, football, eat, sleep, football, eat, sleep, football, to just chilling on the block. Not so much causing trouble, but just being in places and situations I shouldn't have been in. I mean, so I think 
expectation for me now as a man is to first of all just be happy and just make sure your household is happy be this happy person for real and you know not being so bitter and not being so sad and not being so angry is the hardest thing but i think if we if if, if i carry on that mindset and if i carry on that expectation of myself just to be happy and make sure everyone around me is happy then i think that's the only expectation you need man yeah I mean, it seems like Give yourself a break, mm. in a way. You can be sad. Sad isn't bad. No, I totally agree with him. As I say, I've... It took me a while to kind of come out with it, but now I'm, I'm, I'm freely... I'll freely speak about my mental health to everybody. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've just met you as... We're talking through there. I'm telling you about stuff I've done and things like that, so... If it helps somebody, then... Uh, I, I don't really care, do you know what I mean? If somebody thinks that... What I've been through is kind of selfish or that, then... I don't care because, as I say, it says more about it, it doesn't mean you, but no, I think what should be expected of us, I agree with yourself, is we don't, people shouldn't make us feel what they need to be, mm-hmm. all masculine and hide their emotions, and because, as you say, look at the stats there, look at what's happening, because people can't speak about things.